Yeah, you detail them later to look like you know stitching or something. That makes yeah. Sense. So whether these are kind of horn or spikes, spikes is kind of a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah. I can just keep just keep dark for now. The focus really isn't on the leg. Um, as long as it looks like he's standing in proper balance. If you're doing a character, do you uh, pick a emphasis point to, to detail a lot or and then let the rest kind of fall off and be implied or do you render the entire thing to um, well if the client wants everything, which they usually do, then you have to do everything. But as far as variations on weapons, um, yeah, you would want to go in and either on a whole new image just do a whole sheet of, of weapons, kind of like I was doing here, so you can mix and match different things. Well, like you said, if they want you to uh, refine and detail everything, then is there still a way to emphasize parts like maybe biting or something? Oh, or, absolutely. So that way you don't have to... Yeah. You can still emphasize it whether they want it all rendered out or not? Right. Yeah, lighting and, and color are a big part of playing. And, you know, how you want to expose your new character. Just looking for maybe something else. Not, not much done on those. So that's fine. Yeah, so that's something I do in the image a lot as well. This is kind of what I started doing today. I can turn that into a brush and I'll show you guys how to use custom brushes to add detail. Um, it saves a lot of time. So at this point, there it was there. Just flatten it all again. And yeah, so if I did want to mess with, with color right away, and a lot of times I do this, I'll get kind of forward with Duplicated the, the layer, <coughs> colorize it, and it instantly adds to, you know, adds a whole new dimension to, to the mood of the character. And wherever I want my light you know, to be, do I want it? Do I want it to be backlit? put a lot of emphasis on the front of the character like this, then I'm going to need a lot more detail on this area. So I'm just using the dodge tool to light. Dodge tool is right there. Dodge and burn is the lightning and darkening things. Um, they both uh, the dodge lightens to white, and the burn burns to black. It works okay with color sometimes, but uh, do you prefer that over overlay layers? Um, this is just a real quick and dirty way of doing it because this is right on the layer. This is done right on it. So, yeah, I do use a lot of overlay. Overlays and multiplies. Let's see if I get an overlay. You want an overall base color, so it's now this kind of warm, it's this warm glow to it. So now I can get an overlay layer, and or multiply or soft light. They all kind of do similar things, but it really depends on what's underneath it. 
So let's see here if I want to. Now I can mess with what, what color is his skin. Is he going to be the usual fat looking tan or is he going to be blue? In this case, I just thought of the blue because of it. it's the complement to the orange. popular complementary colors, the blue and the orange. It's James Cameron's favorite. It's obvious in, in Avatar, but in a lot of his movies, you see the, the blue and the orange complement. It works really well. So that works good for his skin. There was before. Here it is now. It's subtle. And then when I start rendering character and not just pick from from these tones I've established. So that's where we started, real basic, just value. And when you colorize an image, it just keeps all your values the same, it keeps them relative to what they were to, to one another. And you can see I'm just constantly flipping this thing just to find new ways of trying to make it more interesting. <coughs> this thing, this gun here, can maybe use a little bit of color. So in this case, I would I just have a basic airbrush, and then I set the brush to a color dodge. And that's that gives you the glow that, that you want to. any kind of color glow to anything. Um, do I want this thing more blue? Uh -huh. So is it because it's also on this layer that you've already kind of established colors and um, dodge too, so it's already brighter that dodging, that color dodging with these colors are now making it glow? Or if you just took a white piece of paper and color dodged these colors, it would do the same thing? Um, yeah, color dodge won't work on white, only on, on dark. Okay. Because it, it'll because it lightens that up too. Yeah. So if you have a dark background or something, you do color dodge, it'll lighten it up in a glow or something. Yes, exactly. So, like in the case of, and you can do it by hand if you want, but I know if my brush is set to color dodge, and I pick this kind of blue here, and start painting right there, it's going to lighten towards that color. And that's what color dodge is doing. I believe that's a photographic term, the dodge thing. If you're Use on that term, it's all right. It's, if you think of it as glow, then that's a very, very good way of thinking of the color dodge. So if you use Coral Painter, they have a glow brush. It's the color dodge brush in Photoshop. It actually works better than color dodge in Photoshop, which is why sometimes if I know I want a really interesting proper glow effect, I will bring the image into Painter <coughs> just to do that back in the Photoshop, something like a sun or some kind of electrical. How often do you find yourself working before or between the two platforms? Uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, I can show you guys that if you want. Um, the thing with Painter is that it, it doesn't work well with a lot of layers. In this case, it would be fine. I only have three, and I would want to save out a newer version. So. You guys want these? Cool. You can see them step by step, but let's see here. just flatten all of that, and I can bring that into Painter. Now, Painter, it, you know, also runs a little slower in Photoshop, so you don't want to have all the all the layers. But let's see. I'll just do that real quick. You guys teach Painter here? No, 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 no. Digital link and painting class. A little bit, huh? Yeah. It's a really great program. We'll give it free to our students if they want it. Really? Oh, it's, it's fantastic. I'll take one. Yeah, take one. Uh, what do they have to do to get that sample? They need uh, a tech cage. But they'll just give you a copy of it? No, they'll give you a form to sign up and then you have to have it signed by your academic director. So, um, 
Yeah, because I teach over at Studio Arts, they, they gave me the copy. This program is really not that expensive. Um, Photoshop is the piece. Zero bucks. See, it's taken a while. Okay. And also, it's uh, because I have that text layer, sometimes Painter doesn't know what to do with it, so it starts crying and putting up a little fit. <laughs> it, I really struggled with Painter in the beginning because it, it just it had a lot of bugs in it, crashing, it was really unpredictable. But when it worked right, it was, it was amazing. So you can see here, Painter has this really great color wheel. And let's see here, I started, um, you guys know who Andrew Jones is? Yeah. Concept Arts, yeah. It's kind of pioneered this technique um, that I stole from him. I use a lot, actually. Um, where you use this pattern brush to <coughs> You know, just bring in a, a few more interesting uh, patterns, and it's kind of hard to explain. Let me show you. So what you do is you bring in, let's see here. These are images I made, much like I make brushes in Photoshop. And that's pretty much what the graphic looked like, just flat like that. But when you use it with this particular brush, and I'm on a different layer. Nice. To just do really interesting things with, with the graphic that you brought in. So let's see here if I want to. I want to use that for that weapon there. And I'll just. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know what it's going to. It do keeps shading there. Yeah. So that one doesn't look good. So I have a few in here that I can choose from. There. Can you said a certain amount of stuff that you can going to combine, or is it restrict that? Uh, with with this particular brush. Yeah. Well, basically, you're taking whatever graphic you brought in. In the case of you know, you can make a circle and just do that with it. It's pressure sensitive, so I can press light to get a very thin line, and then press hard all in one, all in the same stroke. What? It, it, is a certain brush, not not the not the picture you brought in, but pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern. It's a pattern pen. Um, you have all these. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like your species and genus, if you will, of, of painter. You have all these brushes here, which are all incredible. And then within each brush, you have variations of that brush. Here's that pattern pen. You can customize them. Um, in this case, I'm using a pattern marker. They all kind of do different things. It takes a little while to figure out what, what they can do. And then you import some kind of graphic. Like in this case, I got this from like a clip art book, Butterfly. That looks kind of Victorian. I can use that to help me design a pattern within the wings. But again, it, it's abstract, so it's going to give you so you, find, you find yourself yeah. painting it, like maybe cropping yeah. parts of it, <laughs> shaping it. Yeah, yeah. You, you, it's hard to dictate what it does. Yeah, you don't, you don't need to use all of it. That's the good thing about it. So that's, I like that. I like what it did there. So it, it's kind of this uh, interesting experiment that happens. I'm just going to lasso that. I like that maybe for the wing right back there. I build up, you know, different layers with different elements on them. And then what you do is that you paint within the selection. That's the key. You don't really leave it to black. You know, let me do a few more. I'll show you guys. So it adds, it adds a whole new level of you know, complexity, I guess. It really wasn't that much work per se. Like this is a 
this graphic, this is something I saw on like this Aztec plate in some museum. It was, it was just that, it was just the one. And uh, I thought it was just really interesting. It reminded me of a feather, like a real graphic feather. So I thought that would make a really cool painter pattern. So not that I would use it for feathers, but in the case of, let's see here, the, the wiring that's kind of going back behind it. So. You can't, yeah, so you kind of have some stuff like on your part. Yeah, so sometimes it's the, the simplest patterns that are going to do some really, really cool stuff for you. So. Then I just I select what I had, what I had done. In the case of, so it's really I, I wanted the selection. I want the selection on this area on this this gun here. I'm going to leave those black so I don't have to worry about that. So here's the selection selected. You can do the same thing in Photoshop. And then I can invert that selection. Start painting inside of it. So let's see. You can hide your, your selection just like you can in Photoshop. And you can see how you can reveal. This was the, I'm revealing the, the inverted part of it. these subtle little things that are going to bring it to life. You can change the color and you know, use my glow. So this thing can be like, you know, charging up or whatever it's doing. And sometimes that's all I'll use it for. In this case, I'll um, keep these, these wires going back. Subtle little introductions of, of texture really kind of help, help pull it all together. So again, it works a lot like Photoshop. Here's this, this wing here, which I'll do the same thing. So in Photoshop, if you hit Command or Control inside of your side of the box there of the layer, it'll select it. You can also do it manually by going to select and so forth. So in this case, I, I don't want it black. I just want the selection, so I'll just delete that layer. And I'll also hide it. It, it speeds things up when you hide it. Where, where are you clicking hide right there, the show hide marquee? Is that it? Yeah, this, okay. yeah. So another cool thing in Painter is that you can make these custom palettes with these uh, you know, with tools or or uh, keyboard shortcuts or anything like that. That's kind how, of, how do you do that? Do that by custom uh, yeah. so palette. <laughs> yeah, custom palette. Uh, organizer command. Command, command to okay. anything here. So I have custom palette 12 there. I can go to add command, add to 12. Then I go up in here and say, okay, I want now fade. In there. And what you, you just click it, or you just click it. You just click it, and it'll it'll go in there. And that's pretty much it. That's, that's it. It's a pretty cool little, little thing that separates it from Photoshop. And you have all your brushes, <laughs> um, any brushes that you like, you can drag them down. Since you use a lot of these patterns here, group them. like Photoshop and you hit tab and all goes away. So I want to get that, that glow brush and just illuminate <coughs> that. It's a little too too saturated. All I wanted was just that subtle little indication um, just as a reminder of maybe how I can pattern these these wings later on. 
have little hints of highlights or things like that. So again, just, just the one layer. Let's see here. So I'll, I'll duplicate the layer now. Another interesting brush is the digital watercolor brush, um, which is basically just like using watercolor. Um, so it would be like using a multiply layer in Photoshop. So I can see here, I can enhance, I can enhance the tones and, and the colors that I already have using this. The thing about digital watercolor is that you have, to, you have to dry it or else whatever you do on top of it. It's like adding wet on wet. So if you've ever done watercolor, I can keep painting this, you know, adding different tones. Oh, so you just like blending over it? Yeah. But once you, uh, you want to dry it so that you can use your glow brush efficiently on it. So layers. I did it in watercolor. And because it's it's not even that big of a file, you can see how it's, it's just a little, little slow. Let's see. So I can use that digital watercolor to help me kind of fill in some of these gaps here. Uh, and it blends really well. The painter blends. Incredibly well. This is all just one one stroke. I'm not lifting the pen off. Let's see here. Then. Photoshop can uh, simulate this uh, in the end, I guess, but it cannot do it the way that this is doing it. It's really nice. So yeah, going back to the globe. I like using that here. Enhancing some of this blue. Maybe these are some kind of super special vision or something like that. And on the light source, to determine what kind of you know highlights I'm gonna get. I've also set this up to flip so I can continually flip this image. I can add these little nice little highlights. Again, you can do all this in Photoshop. I just I like how simple Painter is. It kind of forces me not to use a lot of layers. Also, you can rotate the canvas so. Great string and neck. I believe the new the newer photo version of Photoshop you can rotate, but not like this. It's just just hold down to the off the alt and the space bar. So are you painting a three hundred detail? Yeah. And you know, going back to that. Having a high pixel count is very important. So if you have something that's 300 dpi and 100 pixels by 100 pixels, it's going gonna, gonna to look horrible because it doesn't have a high pixel count. So, yeah, mainly again, what I use for use painter for is these is pattern pen and certain kinds of glow features. Or sometimes I'll just, I don't feel like working in Photoshop. I just I want to get out of it. There's just too many, too many options there. So now I can use this pattern pen in interesting <coughs> ways.
brush. You get these really fine lines and very thick lines. It's against the pattern. Put another, another pattern down and kind of see what happens. why this is the main way that I use this pattern brush is throw a bunch of a bunch of it down and see what I get out of it. So I'm just picking picking different patterns and learn you know, in the brush figure. That's another great thing about painter is, is uh, resizing the brush on the fly like this. Really helpful. Command prompt is that? That's uh, option and command. So I believe Alt, Alt, Control on a PC. Just try it out so you get a little of these uh, crosshairs that come up. And then you just click and drag. Make my brush huge. Work. You can also use the brackets on your keyboard just like in Photoshop, but what's why bother? Uh, these, these more elaborate patterns. So, you know, like this, uh, <coughs> crop circles or something? Yeah, I think these were crop circles. That I you convert to a black and white image, you up the, the contrast, and then you. So now it's just this giant mess. It's, it's, it's kind of interesting because you don't know what you're going to get. Again, I just want the selections of these things. Um, I don't want. You know, it looks kind of interesting, but it's just a big mess. So I can hit command and click inside of, inside of the layer there. And I'm just going to delete that layer. Now I'm going back to the character layer and I'm going to just paint on that. I'm going to hide that marquee. And this makes the process a little bit more fun because you don't know what you're going to get. Kind of like treasure hunting. Bit on that, but the closest <coughs> thing. Try to okay. Glow and hide all that annoying stuff. So, and again, it's going to be a little slow. Inter. Inter just does that. There's something you can do to kind of preempt that. It doesn't handle RAM as well as Photoshop. It can't handle as much RAM as Photoshop. So that's that's the problem until they, they fix it. So it doesn't matter how much RAM you have. I mean, it does to a certain degree up to how much it can actually handle. But it's just kind of the way it is. So now I'm looking at these selections. some motion or, or interest in the image. So once you find it, you're like, oh, okay, that's good. I'm going to use that. Experiment with different colors. I'm not really going too far from the blue-orange. So I can make my saturation right there, put saturation here, and just value right there. I didn't want to overdo it with any of that, but it's just, it's just keeping certain things moving along. 
All right, you've got the floor. Yeah, all right. Now, before I... I want to show you guys this, this reel I put together of my work. It's professional and personal stuff. Some stuff had a bunch of NBA stuff on it, so I can't really talk about it. Cause so I just want to show you guys, you know, what I've done. This is probably the past three, three years or so. Work.
to see on the big screen. Uh, yeah, so a bunch of work I've done, um, like I said, personal and professional. And it's good to uh, eventually get your work together in some type of reel or, you know, obviously in all of my portfolio, some kind of blog. And, um, yeah, so let's get back to this guy. Are we going until 3? Yeah, 3, and then maybe Q&A from... Okay. Or you can go till 3.30 and then you know, just yeah, ask questions while you're doing it. Or they can... Six. Yeah, 3.30 is it. Okay, so let's... Um, I'll make a brush that now I can use to detail this character a little bit more. So custom brushes are something that Photoshop does incredibly well. I rely on them. Significant amount, uh, a lot of work, and it all kind of comes from um, Spark and, and his guys developing this technique. Um, of making you know, something from scratch and then reusing it again, going back to uh, the guns we were looking at earlier, making yourself assets and being able to reuse. Them as much as possible. It makes less work for you and uh, it just helps you to grow as, as an artist more. So making a brush is pretty simple. This is a brush that I've made, uh, you know, obviously alien-esque. This was all made in Photoshop. It was rendered out, and by using some filters, I was able to achieve this effect. And then I made this into a brush that I can actually paint with. And um, so, so you start with just a blank canvas. A brush file doesn't need to be any bigger than five. Five megabytes. That's even pretty. That's pretty big for a brush. But if you want your brushes high resolution, then go ahead and have something. You know, four or five megs. But you know, one megabyte is, is a good size for a brush. So you have your background. You get a new layer, and basically, it's just a matter of getting some kind of graphic up there, either with the lasso, or you can use a piece of photography. Make the brush. So I'm just going to make some kind of simple graphic. or all cut away from it. So I'm thinking this is going to be, well, this can be many things, but at this point, I'm just going to show you just how simple it is to make a brush. Fill it with black. And you get a new layer on top of that. You want to fade the edges. This is going to give depth to the brush. So I'm just going to take the white that's around it, kind of fade off some of the edges. And you'll see why it's important to do this when you're actually painting with the brush. So it doesn't have to be this perfect fade. You essentially want to get rid of those very sharp edges because they're going to show up um, a little bit too much when you use the brush. So, usually at this point I like to crop in the saved space. And then I flatten the entire image. And then you go to Edit, Define Brush Preset. Hit OK. 
decay, and your brush is now your brush. So you find it in your brush palette. Just open that up. And where it says brush presets, you want to click on that, and your new brush will show up there at the bottom. This is what it looks like completely unedited. There's no fade. There's only the fade that you hand did on it. But you can see here, if I start painting like this, it just ends up all opaque. There's, there's nothing, nothing there. So what you want to do is click on other dynamics. That's going to give you that pen pressure fade. So now if I softly press, I get something. If I press hard, I get more opaque, and I can lighten up. So, first thing you want to do. At this point, I'm going to, on shape dynamics, I'm going to change that where it says angle jitter. I'm going to change it to direction. Turn all these sliders down. And this is going to allow the brush to paint in, in the direction that my pen is going. So this is great for chains or ropes or scales or alien-esque things that you can see what it's doing there. You can also change under brush tip shape, change the axis of the brush. So we're going to see it around. Change the spacing. You can squeeze the brush like that. Get the kind of look you're going for. I'm going to have a taper on the, on the edge under size jitter. I set that to pen pressure. So now I get a taper and then full thickness and then taper it off again. Is this just something you're doing to bend to what you want to do with this brush, or is that kind of like a set pattern you do to the taper and all that? Because you know, like from experience, like it just it comes out better like that. Well, if you, if you want it to be directional, like in the case of these, let's see there these. Then you want it to taper because it goes away and then back towards the camera and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, and if you just hold an even pressure, it's just, it's all going to be the same thickness anyway. Yeah. So you might as well set it to taper so that. So you can determine as you draw. Yeah. So when you ease up on it, it will get it will get a little bit thinner. So these are great for doing things like that and just doing. Textural elements. I'm just pressing very lightly. This is adding texture. Yeah, it's kind of it's adding a texture. It's adding uh, some kind of like a motion, rhythm to the image. It's doing doing a lot for it. Those and it's subtle stuff. So if I like that brush, in this case I want to edit it a little more. You need to you need to save the brush. Straight up like that. I'm gonna unsqueeze it a little bit. Spacing. So these can be add a kind of feather quality to these wings. The combination of feathers and you know, bat wings. You still have this brush set to color dodge. You need to make sure you see up there it's set to color dodge. It's gonna you know paint a little differently, so I'm gonna change it back to normal. So once you like the brush, you want to click on the little icon at the bottom of the brush palette, just click on it, hit OK. So there's the new save brush. Here's the, the previous one that I brought in. I'm going to hit option to get rid of that. So now all I have is that one. So I've basically done that with all of these brushes. These are all set to directional. That's just one thing that the brush can do. You set the brush to 
pen pressure, like here's a crazy example. So here's a tractor brush. Yeah, so you can use it as a stamp, but you know, we as concept artists are better than that. We're not, we're not clip art people. But you know, if you did want to, because <laughs> you have the dynamic sound, so it just kind of turns, whatever. Yeah, so if I had that off, it's just a stamp. <laughs> so, so I'm trying to get back to that. But that's not, we don't want to use these things blatantly as they are. We want to use them to get newer ideas. So, again, other dynamics, shape dynamics, and change the angle jitter to pen pressure. Put the X, Y, chair. So now I'm just going to do the same things I have no control of. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll try it in another image. Let's see. So at this, after you make a brush, you, you flattened it, but I like to always undo that. Flatten. So now I have the layers back again. In that case, I can just have my graphic. Adjust the fade, I can adjust the opacity if I wanted to, I can go back to the graphic and make it completely new. And so and I can also make a, a custom shape out of it, which is it's very useful. So once you have a selection of something, you go into your paths palette and you click on the icon make um, path from selection. So now it's now this is what's called a path. It just looks like an outline of whatever graphic you made. Um, your graphic had some crude edges, it's gonna pick that up. If it's a low resolution image, it's gonna pick up in a more crude kind of way, but now I can make that path into a custom shape. So I, where we find define brush preset, we go and click define custom shape. So I'm using that brush um, now to make a custom shape, so I'm doubling my efficiency. So those things are good for First, those are found right here under it's the line tool. So this is a default line tool, so it's a great tool for drawing perspective grids and things like that. So you can click and hold on that and you get the custom shape tool. And up here, next to that little blob thing, you have your whole set of custom shapes. Um, Photoshop comes with some default ones, and they're all pretty pretty lame. So you need to make your own or get some online. A lot of people give them away, like on DeviantArt, they give them away. So this is that shape that I just captured, and now I can drag it out and squeeze it and manipulate it like so. So from that one shape that became a brush, you now use to build, you know, basically anything I want. In this case, it looks like. Be part of the weapon that he's holding. He's <coughs> just being uh, trying to be as efficient as, as possible in your process and reusing your assets. And now I, I always have this custom shape that I can, I can get my custom shape out. So I've made some for buildings on projects I use where I. I just want to What's that? I just said Star Trooper. Oh, yeah, that was from DeviantArt. So there's all these tree ones that um, are from DeviantArt. Just go to DeviantArt and type in custom shape. Um, you'll, you'll get hundreds and hundreds of, of these custom shapes that come up. So there's lots of trees. Uh, yeah, Storm Trooper. I, I don't <laughs> Put a stormtrooper like in his arm, or you would never notice yeah. that. <laughs> Someone's like, wait a minute. Is yeah. that it? That a lightsaber there? When you get to this point where you start collecting a lot of these shapes, and you don't need to use. Is this 
takes up this takes up RAM looking at all these. That's why it's kind of going slow and disappearing. Um, so you want to you want to start editing as many as you can. People, sexy dancer. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just from your personal collection? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so instantly scale is introduced because all we did was put a little little dude next to him. That that makes it a lot more interesting. Imagine seeing that thing. You're an infantry man and you have to deal with that. That's kind of cool actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> and the tractor next to it. Sorry. I wanted to show you this, this tractor going, going nuts. set to complete randomness. It'll easily become a, a giant mess, but eventually you can start finding things. Oh, for sure. And you just like, do something like this and then cut a part out that you, you find blended really yeah. nicely and put it in the armor or something like that? Yeah, exactly. So sometimes I'll do, if I'm getting bored or kind of not getting a piece, I'll, I'll just do this as an exercise. Something always eventually comes out of it. I'll always find something. So it's it's a good way of exploring different things. This is also it's made a nice texture that you can put in some kind of background. Then you, you get your lasso and you start to you know, cut out uh, shapes, or in this case, cutting out some negative shapes, some crazy large. Is there a reason you do it so jaggedy instead of just kind of selecting what you like? Does that give it more of a um, at this point, accidental not, yeah. kind of deal? Yeah, and at this point, I, I'm not sure what I like. I want to bring some of it forward like this area right here. And in that, you can start finding things. I have this set to put vertical as well. It's a great way to experiment if like a breach. Or you don't know. What was that? You guys see certain something? Like a breach. Yeah. yeah. Where is the bridge? Oh yeah, <laughs> put it again. Let's get it. Start seeing a lot of cool shapes. Though. Yeah. yeah. Like I don't know. I always I see some. This is like a leg. Or I don't know. It could be. It could be anything. That's the point of this this exercise. But then you bring in more exact shapes. So these are brushes that I made that are more more literal. I guess um, they're not anything in particular. They they can be become anything. But at this point, they're just set to direction. Eventually, you start uh, coming up with brand new, interesting pieces very quickly, um, given that you've made um, uh, the brush already. So this brush was made just the way I showed you. Because I'm going to make that other one. A little bit more thought was put into it. But it looks like that. Crazy thing. So a lot of times, I'll just actually be productive to go back. And then I could save out that thing that I just made as a, as a texture. Um, this guy looks too big. Let's make this like dark. <laughs> 
still be all these things that we want it to be. Uh, I, get, I lost the text. So, uh, still steampunk because of the, the goggles. Um, we can add let's see, some more some more wiring and stuff in all the, uh, the insides. These, these weapons still need to develop. But it's, it's well on its way to with different colors as I go on by using uh, adjustment layers. It's now, now at the bottom of the layers palette. I can go to selective color. If I want to lessen some of these reds or put different colors inside of the reds, I can move these sliders around. Let's see. This is effect affecting all of the reds by either removing cyan or adjustment layer so I can click on and off of it. There it is before, here it is now. It's becoming much more of a, a cooler. And then let's see, put a photo filter layer on that. Like the overall image again. Change that to any one of these. Um, <coughs> Orange seems to work pretty well. But because I put this orange photo filter over everything, it's, it's affecting the skin. So what if you want to affect mask this one? Yeah, it's already set up as a mask. So now I just need to paint inside of it. So when you paint inside of the mask, you either reveal or, or erase. You're not really erasing, but you're just giving the appearance of it. So if I paint with black, See there, I'm revealing that blue underneath. So I'm painting inside of the mask. But I'm not erasing anything. Um, I can always bring it back if I hit X, paint with white, and I get back what I initially started out with. So this is great for doing subtle color variations. In this case, maybe it's a little bit, maybe it's a little bit more green here and a little bit more blue chest. 
This was a subtle change. It's bringing more of the blue out in him, which is good. It's making it pop a little bit more. 